Hi everybody, welcome to a very quiet, very lonely Little Kitchen Academy. We miss all of our students very much and we hope everybody is safe and healthy at home. I'm excited today to present uh, a winter veg meat spring veg recipe that you can make for dinner. It's a um, it's perfect time of year for that because we're really saying goodbye to winter and saying hello to spring. So uh, we'll get started. I'm not going to take the full three hours the way we normally would in a in a class because we've got all of the equipment here. Instead of being able to go and source it ourselves, I'm not going to go through all of the tips and tricks today, but as we move through um, our classes online, I'm sure we can pick up most of them. So, so to my students, you'll happen to notice that I'm already in my chef's jacket, my hair is tied back, and I'm standing in a certain position. If you remember what position I'm standing in, you can yell it, maybe I'll hear it. I'm standing in chef's position where I've got my hands behind my back, and I'm waiting, and I'm listening, and I'm ready to start my class. And again, to my students, you'll notice all of the tools are already out on your workstation. And that's really just to save a little bit of time today. Um, but I know that you'll remember where we keep most of these things. So one of our favorite vegetables is the spaghetti squash. And the spaghetti, this is actually on the smaller side. You can usually get them a little bit bigger than this. Um, the spaghetti squash, usually you'll see it in yellow. It will be a, it can be a paler yellow, it can be more of an orange color. There's a few different subtle colors, but it's usually looking like this. And you can get this all year round, but it really is a winter veg and it's full of vitamin C. And who doesn't need vitamin C? And we're also going to be using our spring vegetable, which is Asparagus. Asparagus comes up out of the ground in lovely straight stalks and it's delicious. I actually quite like it raw. I like it barbecued. I love it boiled. I use asparagus all the time. It's delicious. So we're going to start. I've turned my oven on. It's been preheated to 375 degrees. It's a nice hot oven and you'll notice on my workstation and I'm thinking our students might notice that I'm missing something here. What am I missing? I'm missing our sticky mat. I'm sure you yelled that. So we use at Little Kitchen, just one of the ways to be safe, we use a sticky mat. You'll see on a work station or a work counter at home, your cutting boards generally will slip a little bit. We don't want them to slip. We want to keep them very safe. So at Little Kitchen, we use what we call our sticky mats. We line them up along the edge of our workstation and we put the cutting board here. And then we try really hard to see if we can move it and usually it's pretty stationary. If you don't have a silicone mat at home, a damp kitchen towel will absolutely work underneath your cutting board. And our students, they know, does anybody remember which level knife this is? This is the level four knife. We have, four, like I said, we have four levels of knives at Little Kitchen. Today I'm just going to use the chef's knife to get through, but there's not a lot of knife skills in today's lesson. So we've got our cutting board, we've got our tray, and we've put a piece of parchment paper in our tray. We're going to use this to roast the spaghetti squash. Before we roast it, um, we're going to cut it up. Now I'm going to prepare a meal for one person today, what we would normally do at Little Kitchen. Um, I've already taken the time to cut the spaghetti squash in half, and I've taken the seeds out of one. But I'll show you, this is what it looks like. And it's important to have some fun and remember what the squash looks like now because we're going to change it. And sometimes we can smell it and we can use our, our sense of touch to touch it. And obviously we're looking at it with our eyes. We can see the color, we can see how feel how hard it is, we can smell it. And we're going to remove all of the fibers and all of the seeds that are in the middle. At home, if you don't have a melon baller, a, a spoon will absolutely work. But at Little Kitchen, we love to use the melon ballers. We love to use as many tools as we possibly can. And the melon ballers are just a little bit finer. Not, it's not sharp, it's not gonna cut you. I mean, you'd have to work really hard to get it to cut you. But it's a nice scraping sound when we pull out all of the membrane and the seeds from the spaghetti squash. Some of our students will meticulously take oodles and oodles of time to get every single last strand out, and some will do two big swipes through it and be done. 
So once all of this is out, I know all of my students can remind me where this goes. Where, do, where should we put all of this? Into the compost. My compost bin is right there. And what else would we do? We would normally put this in our sink so we can wash it later. So there we have it. We have a nice hollow um, spaghetti squash. If we've gone and we've dug a little bit and we've exposed some of the spaghetti noodles, it's not a big deal. We won't worry about that at all. So now, before we put this in the oven, we want to give it a little bit of extra flavor and we also want to protect the flesh a little bit. And this is really fun. Our students love this. If you have a small jar or a ramekin or even a little cup, you can bring it to the workstation. You get a little bit of olive oil. This requires um, balance and a really steady hand. If we can grab the one teaspoon measure, it's one TSP, five milliliters. We hold it very carefully over the ramekin and we pour very slowly. Now, if our students were here, we would actually have our students walk from the pantry all the way back to their workstation like this. Try not to spill a drop. And a lot of our students, most of our students can do it. What's another thing that we like to do when we've poured the olive oil? We like to taste it. Mm. I think if colors had an actual flavor, this would be green to me. It's delicious, it's creamy, and it's got a lovely, lovely bright taste. So we've poured the olive oil into our container and if you have a pastry brush or a basting brush at home, this is so much fun. If you don't, drizzle the oil in and smear it with your fingers. They're washable, we can wash them at any time. But if you have this, our students love to do this. We're going to just very liberally paint, as we call it, paint the oil all over the insides of our spaghetti squash, covering every single bit. And again, sometimes this can take five seconds, sometimes this can take 15 minutes. We want to cover every single bit of it. Just like that. And then to my students who are watching, where would we put this when we're finished? It's right in the sink. Okay, so we finished with that. Now, there's something else I said we want to put, we've protected it, we've given the spaghetti squash a little bit of flavor, but we're going to add a little bit more flavor. Anybody remember what this is? This is our salt, that's right. And a nice big pinch. We love to be dramatic and sprinkle a pinch of salt onto each half of the spaghetti squash. And then, what's the next one? This one you can see a little bit more. Lovely pinch onto each half. Good thing to do is to wipe your hands after that because you don't want to rub your fingers and your eyes around your nose. You'll definitely sneeze. Okay, so now we've finished with that. Our spaghetti squash is lovely and seasoned. We're going to put it on our tray. Just like that. So we need one more thing. Another ingredient that we're going to roast alongside our spaghetti squash is garlic. And this is really fun. And it always surprises me how much our children, our students love garlic. They love looking at it when it's in a bulb. They love looking at it when it's a clove. They love the powder. It's definitely one of the more popular um, seasonings we have. So um, I always let the children do all of this work. I think it's important that the children take as much ownership and are able to be a part of as many steps in the process as possible. They're connecting with the food, they're removing fear from the food, and they're personalizing it to make it good to them. So as many steps as possible. I know at Little Kitchen we have three trained instructors, so we have six pairs of eyes watching. You know, we've got a much bigger environment. We're a little bit more organized to support the students. But at home, if, the, if it's possible to work alongside them and let them really have at it, they will thoroughly enjoy it. So we have our garlic cloves. I always tell our students to put the garlic clove down as flat as it possibly can be. And then what do I do with one hand? I heard it, the claw. And then 
most of our students don't move into the chef's knife position. I'm using it today, just it's easier. I'm assuming that's probably what you have at home. Um, regardless of what knife um, your student is or your child is using, I suspect they can tell you the correct grip. Maybe if my students are watching now, they can yell out really loud, is that the right way to hold the knife? No, I heard a yell, I heard a yell there. We're gonna pinch the grip, our hands safely wrapped around the handle, and our other hand is a paw. If it looks a little backwards to you, it's because I'm left-handed, and most left-handed people look backwards at times. So I'm gonna hold my garlic, or whatever I'm cutting, with my claw to keep it really secure. I'm leaning into my counter, and I'm leaving the tip of the knife on the cutting board. And there's a part of the garlic there, it's really rough, I mean, it's not gonna kill you to eat it, but it's, it's certainly gonna hurt on the way down. You can't digest that really well. We wanna get rid of it. So we're gonna do a very thin slice right off, just like that. That's off, you can see now, it's gone. And we'll do the same for this one. Just like that. Okay, does anybody know where I would put the tips of this garlic? So, now this is one definite um, part of the class our students love. We have to smash it. Smashing it's gonna help um, take the paper off, it's gonna flatten it so we'll get a much more even roast when we're cooking it in the, in the oven. So a lot of people, when they prepare to smash garlic, will smash it like this on the cutting board. And that, technically, it, it's right, but if you think about it, the handle is thicker than the blade, so how far is my blade actually gonna go? It's not actually going to flatten it as much as it possibly can. So I remove the handle off the cutting board just so the blade is there, and I put the blade on top of the garlic, and I smash. And it's loud, and when there's 10 or 11 being smashed, it gets really loud in here, and it's super fun. Sometimes the garlic will go flying. We always have a good giggle. So now if we have a look, I've absolutely smashed my garlic. The paper comes off really easily in one piece into the compost, and my garlic is lovely and smashed, and wow, I've really opened up the flavor. I'm gonna put it right in the middle of my spaghetti squash. Now if you don't have or you don't feel confident letting your child use a chef's knife for that and you don't have any smaller knives, that little wooden spoon will work just as well and just again it's another smash. And then look at that. Perfectly flattened. The paper is off. A little bit more garlic right there. And into the compost and into the middle of the spaghetti squash. This spaghetti squash at this point, you could roast it, throw a little bit of um, tomato sauce and some mozzarella cheese in there and have a delicious dinner. But we're gonna do a little bit different, do it a little bit differently today. So we have our spaghetti squash. Let me move it back into the camera view. Our garlic clove I've placed inside and I'm gonna flip it over like that to hide the garlic protect the garlic a little. And the garlic is going to steam in and really add a lot of flavor to that spaghetti squash. So this is gonna go into the oven now. This is gonna go into the oven for, these are pretty small spaghetti squash, so I think about 20 to 25 minutes. I'll show you what it looks like through the magic of TV, um, what it looks like when it comes out of the oven, but I suspect about 20 to 25 minutes. And you'll be able to tell when it's done when you take a fork and you can just gently pierce through. So this is what our spaghetti squash looks like when it's out. You can see it started to darken. It looks a little bit sweaty on the outside. There's some lovely color appearing and it's kind of shrunk a little bit. It's a little bit wrinkly. I'm gonna turn it over. You can see how beautiful the color has presented now. A little bit of drizzle there. And this lovely seasoning is in here. And this is the fun part. And I wouldn't stop even if you're not finished cooking yet um, and you're not ready to eat, show your, especially the children who are a little nervous about trying something new, let them discover with just a fork how we've just turned the squash into noodles. There's noodles, it looks just like noodles and this can replace any dish you're cooking with noodles anytime. Way fewer calories, way more vitamin C. It's delicious. I'm gonna put this aside for a second. So now we need to consider what we're going to add 
to that spaghetti squash. Now, at Little Kitchen, we always consider not cook, we could cook all of this at one time, but I want to be mindful of little hands touching that spaghetti squash. It's gonna, when it comes out of the oven, it's steaming hot. We really need to let it sit and cool down before the children handle it. So at home, you may be able to do all of this at one in one go, but for a little kitchen, we're going to do it one step at a time. So the other ingredient uh, that we're using today was the asparagus and the asparagus comes out spring it's perfect time now it's looking beautiful bright green you can actually get purple asparagus and white asparagus too and they're delicious um, a fun we haven't done this at little kitchen we haven't been through a spring yet but a really fun activity or part of um, working with asparagus is trimming it the bottom of the asparagus is really fibrous and really tough and while you can eat it it's not going to taste good and it's going to take forever to chew so we usually cut that off or we snap it and you'll be able just to feel and this is a great um, a tool for using the imagination for really trying to decide and feel with your hands where the softness stops and the roughness begins and the easiest way to do is put your hands on the end Hold it very gently and snap. And generally where it snaps, this is the delicious part, this is the part that's difficult to chew, and we compost it. And I suspect when we bring this into our kitchens, we'll have all the children listening quietly to that beautiful snap. And only fresh asparagus is gonna snap like that. Yeah, it looks awesome. So at Little Kitchen, when our produce comes in, we as instructors will clean and wash everything before it even goes in our fridge. But when our students come to collect it from the fridge, we teach them how to wash it too. Does anybody remember what we collect our produce in when we're going to wash it? The colander. This is a great tool. If you haven't got one at home, it's um, it's not expensive. I believe we got these at Ikea and they're really fun. It's a collapsible colander and we can spend 15 minutes trying to open these, shutting them, and every single student will put it on their head every single time. So in a normal class, our students would be invited to collect all of their produce and put it in here. We bring it over to the sink and we show them how to wash it. I've already washed it today, so we don't have to worry. Um, now what we're gonna do um, with the asparagus is we're just gonna do into bite, chop it into bite-sized pieces. Again, I would definitely invite your children to chop it up. Um, I know all of our students specifically have extremely safe knife skills and I'm confident that they could do it. Um, if I was to be making a really fancy dinner for a bunch of people um, that I wanted to impress, I would probably cut these on, a, on an angle and make, make them look really fancy. But for my family who's gonna be eating this tonight, I'm going to just do nice bite-sized pieces. And of course, the teacher in me always thinks about math, where we're trying to teach the children or trying to expose the children to all these different units of math through units of measure and weight and um, patterns developing. This is yet another one. Just eyeballing the same size is really difficult. Sometimes as an instructor, what I would do is I would do one cut first and then I would give everybody one on each of their tables and I would ask them to cut their asparagus the exact same size and that can be really difficult that can be really difficult because there's so much activity going on around them sometimes they want to take a bite sometimes there's new smells appearing um, there's sounds going on and it can be really difficult to focus and concentrate and do it and they they achieve this every single time they're amazing so we'll just do a few chops I hope my students who are watching me see that I've still got my claw and I've just chopped my asparagus. My knife is in the safety position and we'll see how well I did. It's not bad. So now we take a bowl and again, a bowl, if everybody wants me to, this always goes on our head too. And we'll put our asparagus in the bowl. So we're not just going to use asparagus today. We're going to do some other fun things with it, but 
Asparagus is going to taste a little bit better if we pull out some of the sugars in it. And the best way to do that is to get it under a really high heat. So we're gonna go back and we're going to put a little bit more olive oil into the asparagus to protect the asparagus. So we're gonna roast that too. Back to the same one teaspoon measure. Into the container. We put it, we measure things into a different container. Is if somebody bumped me or I knocked it, I would put too much olive oil in there and I don't want to do that. So there's my olive oil. Drizzle that. And then again, another pinch. And a pinch is really half of one eighth of a teaspoon. So if you don't want to use your fingers, you can try and figure out what half of one eighth of a teaspoon is. Now our little students love to use the wooden spoon, so we would definitely invite them to stir up. And our older students want to be a little bit more um, professional, so we'll let them toss it like this. Lovely and glossy. Every piece of pepper is on every piece of asparagus. It's ready to go. So at home, um, I would add this asparagus right to the same tray 15 minutes in so we're probably at about 10 minutes now so in another 10 minutes i would add this and let it finish roasting together because this is only going to take about 10 minutes and you'll know what it looks like when these start to look kind of raisiny and they start to get a little bit dark and you'll certainly smell it in the oven i'll show you when we pull it out of the oven our squash is going to look like this and our asparagus is going to look a little bit darker, lovely and glossy and a little raisiny. And maybe if any of my students can help, I can't remember what happened to our garlic. Does anybody remember where our garlic is? I think somebody just told me, look under here. And there's our garlic. And the best part about this garlic right now is it's lovely and soft and the smell is fantastic. And that's going to be delicious in a few minutes. We've pulled out all the sugars in that garlic. Okay, so we've roasted all of the produce that we need. Now we're going to add a little bit more fun to what we're going to build it into. We grab a bowl. At Little Kitchen, we use a few different tools. Um, you'd be surprised if I tell you that the cheese grater is our number one weapon. It's not the knife, it's not the oven, it's not the hot trays, it's the cheese grater. I suspect it's because we don't think of it as being really dangerous and we tend to be a little bit more casual than we should be with this. These blades are sharp and especially um, on ones here, you know, they haven't been used for 15 years. They, they're quite sharp still and we want to teach our students how to use them properly. There's nothing wrong with those gloves and those special tools to help protect, but I would rather teach them how to be safe first um, on an, an everyday kitchen tool. So they love it when we bring out the cheese grater because they know the next thing that comes out is usually cheese. And cheese seems to disappear at Little Kitchen so quickly. I'm going to remove the cutting board um, just off to the side for now because we're going to need it in a few minutes. And we're going to place the cheese grater on the silicone mat. Again, it's just something that's nice. It keeps it nice and stable for water cooking. A lot of our instructors invite the students to put the cheese grater on the side. This is another great tool we got at Ikea. It actually will catch everything that we're grating underneath. And it's, um, I really like this one. It's, it's stable, it's not gonna tip over. Um, it's, a, it's as safe as we're gonna get, I think. Now, at Little Kitchen, we pre-portion the cheese for, for our students because really from the fridge to here, there's three bites taken out of it every single time. For my non-dairy eaters, um, you could definitely just use a vegan cheese here or you could use tofu and just crumble it in. It would be delicious. Um, but this, is, this piece of mozzarella is about 30 grams and this will, nicely grated, will give you about a quarter cup of cheese. Sounds like a lot, but again, we're banking on half of this is going in the mouth before it gets to the dish. 
So when we teach our students how to grate the cheese, we have them hold it really safely at the top of the product, and then we hold the grater in their other hand. We start at the top of the slide, and we just move down in one direction. We come up, and one direction. Up. And it's fun because we can look inside and see the cheese appearing inside. We do this until it gets down to the size that we can sneakily put it in our mouths. And again, for your sanity and the sake and the, um, the cleverness of TV, I've already got one fully graded. So we've got our grated cheese. I invite the children to just to gently run their fingers on the inside where it's not sharp and take out any extras. And we'll add all of our grated mozzarella cheese to our bowl. Just like that. Good. Okay. I'll add these extra pieces. Some of you are really happy with me in my house. Okay, so we've got that. Now we're going to add a few more additions of flavor because we're going to toss the asparagus in this cheese with the roasted garlic and a little bit of lemon juice and a little bit of thyme. If you have fresh thyme at home, absolutely grab that. Uh, you would probably need about a tablespoon of freshly, um, freshly chopped thyme. Little kitchen, we don't have fresh thyme right now. Our food wall is busy growing tomatoes and basil and chives, but no thyme. Uh, half a teaspoon of thyme. Smells fantastic. Right into the cheese bowl. And if you do have both, the fresh thyme and the dried thyme, I would take out both and I would have the child decide which one is gonna be more delicious to them. So that's our thyme. Um, we'll add a little bit more, depending on what cheese you use. Mozzarella doesn't have a lot of um, flavor to it, so I'm gonna add another pinch of salt and another pinch of pepper into my dish. Now we've got the thyme, we've got the mozzarella. We're going to put the garlic and the asparagus in here. One more thing, and it's another tool that our students love. We're gonna add a little bit of acid through our lemon. Um, there's two things. Our students love to use the microplane. I do think when I say the um, grater is the number one weapon, the microplane is probably tied, if not second place, for the grater. We don't use it with the youngest students a lot because it is just so easy to take a chunk of skin out of your hands. Um, but if, the, if our students come all the time and we see that they're extremely great at listening, they manage to control their body a lot, we'll certainly invite them to try and have some fun with it. And we do it the exact same way as we would um, a cheese grater. Move this out of the way. You put it on, on the surface, just like this, and we start at the top, down the slide. And we see that it's no longer bright yellow, but pale yellow, just like that. Now, depending on your child's interest level at this point, you could see this entire lemon white in seconds. You might find that your student or your child has done two or three of them, and the nervousness of how sharp this is has stopped them, they don't wanna do any more. It's totally fine, it's just a bonus, and it's a lovely bright lemon taste in, in the dish, but it's, it's not gonna hurt if you don't use it. I would though, let me just do a few more because I wanna show you one more thing. So now we have all of the lemon zest. We'll just add that to our dish. A little bit from here. What I would do, I'm gonna move this for a second. Some of our students who really like to um, explore their taste buds, uh, well, you'll find all of our students will suck these lemons, there's no question. But I like to challenge our students who are courageous to take a bite out of the lemon that has had the, the zest removed and eat the skin and then take a bite smaller, bite out of the, um, the skin that hasn't had the zest removed. They are always shocked that this is actually really palatable. This is delicious. It doesn't have that bitter, um, dry, waxy kind of taste. Um, 
and it's, it's lovely to eat, quite frankly. Um, which is funny because we use the zest in our recipes. Go figure. Anyways, let's go back to this, the juicing. So our juicer, again, it's another IKEA tool. It's fantastic because it catches all the seeds and the kids can really get into it. We at Little Kitchen we make lemonade a lot. We do a lot of um, juicing for our dressings or for our sauces. And so these get a lot of work. Um, we just remind the children to discover the center of the lemon and we try to match it with the center of the, of the juicer. Oopsies. And we twist and our youngest students love the twisting dance. So we'll twist and twist until we see that the lemons disappeared. And that's always um, good for a few giggles, finding the lemon has disappeared, and then we look inside and we see all this beautiful lemon juice. Now if, you're, if your child wants to juice all of the lemon, which they probably will, um, we're only going to use a tablespoon in our dish and so they're welcome to drink it and enjoy it because what we've seen they really do, they love it. And a lot of our students will ask if they can finish this and our answer is always yes. They, our students at Little Kitchen are encouraged to taste every single thing that we, we work with throughout the entire class. But for my students who are working along with me right now, there's one thing that we never ever taste before we cook it. Does anybody remember what that is? Yes, I heard somebody say eggs. It's eggs. We never taste eggs until after we've cooked them, but everything else you should taste. You should absolutely taste. So this is fun. This requires a bit of work to let's put this back over our bowl so we don't pour too much in. Our one tablespoon measure and we will pour one tablespoon of juice into our cheese and zest. And again, our students, you'll find many times, will be in here checking away. I'm not gonna do it because then my face will look weird and I may not be able to talk for the rest of the class. Okay, so now we've got the mixture in here. We're going to add the asparagus that we've roasted, just like that. We're going to add the garlic like that and then I'm going to mix it I'm going to mash the garlic a little bit with my um, with my wooden spoon just to break it up a little bit and to help release all of the delicious sugary flavor roasted garlic is one of my favorite things to eat it almost tastes like jam after a while it needed to be roasted a little bit longer to make it more jam like in um, in this for this recipe but I want the bite of the, um, the garlic to come out Again, our students love it. Okay, so we'll come back. We've got our spaghetti squash right here. We invite our students then to pour all of this in to their boat, just like that. And there you have it. Now, depending on how long our class took, we might invite the students to put this back on the baking tray and we'll put it back in the oven just to make the cheese melt and be really gooey. At home, I would certainly look at doing that, although I suspect everything will be quite hot as you work through it a little bit faster at home. You don't have a lot of the back and forth that we do um, that takes a little bit longer at Little Kitchen, but this will be just as delicious to eat just like this, not a problem. Um, so if we did have time in class, I would throw that back in the oven and kind of char it up a little bit, maybe Maybe five minutes it won't take any time and during that time we would be washing our dishes since all of that is done through the magic of uh, video uh, this is your beautiful winter veg meets spring veg roasted spaghetti squash and asparagus dinner there you are if you love it please let me know and uh, I hope to see you guys soon